This morning I'd like to bring a message to you uh, that, that is entitled, Impacting a Life. You know, I wish I really had the time to sit before you today to be able to share with you uh, all of the, the people, all of the things, uh, all of the, the things that, that I have been exposed to that has made uh, such a huge impact upon my life. And even, uh, even those things that, that probably most of us might would consider as being negative, some of those things that are, that are things that are dark that I really, you know, don't like to be a part of my life, but yet those are things as well uh, that has impacted my life. There was a Chinese proverb, you probably have heard it said before, but it says, give a man a fish and you'll feed him for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, then you'll feed him for life. You know, when we think about this little proverb of life, it, it really, truly is something that is, uh, something that is so important that we begin to realize uh, the difference that it takes in, in, in order to make an impact. You know, it's easy, it's easy to give money to make a change. It's easy to be able to say, I'll pray for you. It's easy for us to be able to, to just uh, kind of at a distance to be able to try to make a, a difference. And I'm not trying to minimize, you know, the, the ability of, of sending uh, funds for, for a mission. And I'm not definitely not undermining the, the ability of what our prayers do, uh, even though that we're not directly uh, involved in the situation. Because I know that there's power uh, in prayer. But I also believe that sometimes that we can make such a, an impact in someone's life. You know, when I think about teachers and, and they're in the daily grind uh, with their student, and you know, and some of you teachers, you probably have had some students that's come through your class and, that you just thought, you know, there is no way that this kid will ever amount to anything. But somehow or another, you took the time and you, you, you really dug into the, to the, to the student and you stayed with them and, and you hung in there, you just hung in there with them. And then you finally, maybe, maybe not even in your class, uh, but you you realize later on that somehow or another, something that maybe that you did or some other teacher did, that it made an impact upon their life. And I believe that when we make an impact upon someone's life, and, and we not only change them in this life, but we also have an opportunity to be able to change them uh, for throughout all of eternity. I remember the story one time he was speaking about Charles Spurgeon, and uh, Charles Spurgeon uh, told of, the, of how that he came uh, to, to acknowledge who Christ was. Now, it wasn't that Charles Spurgeon wasn't a, a church-going person. He, he was raised in church. He, he was raised up to, uh, to sit under the preaching uh, and the teaching of, of God's Word, but, but it, he, one night uh, he wasn't able to make it to his church. And somehow or another he found himself in the balcony of a Methodist church and he began to hear someone proclaiming the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And here was a little boy who was, who was snuck under the pews and, and was laying on the floor, but yet he so intently heard what the preacher had to say that particular evening in that revival service. And Charles Spurgeon has come, has went on to be one of the greatest, one of the most renowned preachers of all times. As a matter of fact, there was one time in 1857. It was a couple of days before that Charles Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon would be preaching at the, the Christie Palace or the Crystal Palace. That he went in and he wanted to sit up. He didn't, they didn't have all the microphones like they like they have today. So he wanted to go in and he wanted to check the acoustics of the building. And he wanted to see how things would sound whenever he got in there uh, with nothing more than just his voice. And, and in that instance, he says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which take away the sins of the world. Little did he know that there was a janitor that was sitting somewhere on the other side of the wall. He didn't know what those words meant, but he pondered upon those words to the point that he left from where he was. And he went home, and, and after a period of time of struggling uh, with his spiritual status, that he began to think and ponder upon, Behold the Lamb of God, who cometh to take away the sins of the world. That man accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior. 
And because of this, he, he recognized that, that through these words that he heard something that impacted his life. And it changed him to the point uh, that he began to look at life totally different. That he looked at life as not just a life that you just get through, but that, but that life has a purpose. And that life has, has a dream. And that life has goals. And life has something to look forward to. But he recognized it because of his sin condition that he couldn't enjoy this kind of life. Until he met the Savior who came and he took away the penalty of his sin. You see, having the power to impact uh, that can really change the destiny of, of a man's soul. And, and when I even take it even further than that, when you, when you change the, the your, your impact is that it changes the destiny of a soul, but then also that their impact changes the destiny of hundreds and thousands of other souls. You know, if Charles Spurgeon had not been sitting in that floor that night it's very likely that there would be a janitor that was there that night that probably would have died and gone to hell but yet Charles Spurgeon made a difference in his life we might come to the question and we might ask ourselves why do we have a need that we need to have an impact upon life why, why does God need us to, to have an impact upon life and that's where our text brings us to today. I want you to, to direct your attention to Genesis chapter 6 this morning. Genesis chapter 6 is a very familiar story. You, you've heard the story of Noses, uh, of Noah. Not Noses, but Noah. Maybe he was Noses, I, I don't know. But, but the story of Noah and how that he impacted the life of, of humanity. As a matter of fact, did you know... Did you know that if it hadn't been for, for Noah, you wouldn't be here today. <laughs> if it hadn't been for the impact that Noah had made upon all of humanity, then society would not be here today unless God had chosen in a way, in another manner, to be able to preserve His creation. But, but why the need for those who can make an impact. Here, here's the reason why. It's because we find in Genesis chapter 6, the scripture says that it came to pass that when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all uh, which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is blessed, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, that they bare children to them. And the same became mighty men, which were of old and men of renown. But here's the need. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Even to the point that in verse 6 he says, that, And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord says, I will destroy man, whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing in the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. You see, there was something about Noah's day. You know, when I think about Noah, and, and, and used to, I, I thought that, that really a lot of time had, transpired, had transpired and, and it had come to pass that, uh, that thousands of years maybe. But when, I, when you begin to look at the timeline of it, you know, uh, there was, Noah was only one generation from knowing his great, 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 great grandfather. Do you know who that was? Adam. That's right. Did you know that just before Noah was born, that that was when Noah would take his, or when Adam would take his last breath of, of life? But yet we see that in, in those generations that something had changed in the world. Here was a here was a, a world that, that was created by the Creator, but yet no one recognized and no one praised him as the Creator. 
The Bible says that the wickedness of man was evil and that the, the imagination of the heart was evil. It seemed as if the world that Noah had lived in in that particular day and that time, it was a life so different from what uh, he, that he envisioned for his life and also for his children. Now, I don't know, maybe I'm completely wrong because the Scripture really doesn't say it. It's just that we're led to believe that there was something different about the life of Noah. That Noah was someone uh, that, that, that he lived his life in a different way. He looked at God in a different way. He, he looked at the Creator in a, in a different way. You see, what God had made as good, man had made it into something that was evil. And I don't know about you, but you know, I'm kind of like um, uh, I'm kind of like Job. You know, man is born just a few days, and all of a sudden his heart's filled with trouble. His life's filled with trouble. You know, I, I find myself, and I and, and I only I only look in the mirror. You know, not to point the fingers at anyone else, but I tell you what, there's been a lot of evil thoughts. There's been a lot of uh, un, un good deeds in my own life that, that I thank the Lord uh, that He forgave me of those things. But I thank, uh, most of all, I thank Him for allowing me to be able to overcome those evil deeds. To help me to be able to think a little bit differently uh, about who my Creator is. I want you to know that Noah had an impact upon humanity. And when I think about that, you know, I know a lot of times we say, well, you know, what good, what good is one person? What kind of a change can one person make in life? Well, I'm here to tell you that one man, one man made a change, and one man made a purpose and had a purpose. He impacted uh, people in life. And that was a man by the name of Noah. You see, one man can and one man did make an impact upon all of humanity. Each and every person that's in this room here today. You know, I, I'm not just looking at men like Dave because Dave has been a great impact upon my life. But you know, I look at, I look at young people like this young guy right here with his uh, with, the, with the hat on over here. You know, I look at guys like Malachi. You know, yes, Malachi's full of strength. Malachi's full of energy. You know, but one day I believe that if, they, if we could just keep pouring into him, the, the life of Christ, the love of Christ, the instruction of Christ, that one day that we might be able to have an impact upon even a, a young man such as he is. And somehow or another, Noah was that man that made an impact. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8, it says that Noah, that he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And so we know that there was something about Noah that, that was different than the rest of the world. As a matter of fact, as the Bible tells us in verse 9, he says that Noah was a just man. Now, I want you to notice here that the Scripture didn't say that he was just a man. But yet the Scripture says that he was a just man. Can you imagine how Noah must have felt living in a, in a world of wickedness, a, a world that was filled with evil, but yet God was able to see through all of that out of all of the people that was on the earth. And I don't know how many people was on the earth on that time during that time, but I can promise you this, that it was probably more than just one or two. It was probably more than one or two thousand. It was probably more than just ten or twenty thousand. But there was probably hundreds of millions of people that was on the earth in that day. But yet God was able to look down and God was able to see the life and the heart of one man. And that man being Noah. I'm persuaded to believe that God can also look down today and that God can see the heart of you. He can see your heart. He can see your life. He can see the difference and, and that if you would just allow someone to make an impact upon your life of how that, that you can put your full trust in the Lord and that every time that you make this failure in your life, that you're able to, to rise above it. That somehow or another, that when you overcome it and you repent of it, that in your life, in the end, that the impact has been made upon your life, that God would one day look down and say, 
that I find grace in you. And somehow or another in our wickedness, and somehow or another in our evilness, and somehow or another in our unjustly way, that God will be able to one day be able to look in our life and to be able to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in a few things, and I'll make you a ruler over many. You see, Noah was a man who had faith in God. Noah was a man whose, whose heart was right with God. And, and I know that all of that is, is good for Noah. But you know, God, or Noah didn't just take that and just hold it to himself. It was things that he tried to, it tried to inspire in his children. I believe that Noah tried to inspire in, in those when he was building the ark. I believe that he tried to inspire people that you need to come and you need to get on the ark. You need to, you need to get a, be a part of the ark. You need to be preserved. I believe that, that Noah was a great... Uh, that he was a great witnesser, that he wanted to tell other people. He was an evangelistic kind of guy. He wanted to preserve others. But more importantly, he made an impact upon three young men. And that would be his three sons. I don't know how many the impact that Noah had upon others, but I know that the impact that he had upon just his family was something that was very powerful. And I believe today that, that you and I, that we, the greatest thing that we can do is that we can make an impact upon those within our family. I know that one day, that, that today that my children probably think that I hate them, uh, that, that I don't love them, uh, that, that I don't think much of them, but, but I just want them to know that one day, I pray that they would look back and that they would see an impact. An impact that pointed them to the life preserver, Jesus Christ. Did you know that it had it not been for the impact of Noah, that all of humanity would have been destroyed? But yet God looked to one. You may be the one in your family that will change the direction of all of your family. You know, I pray today that, that if nothing else that, that I learned from church, and that is, is that as a church, I want to be a part of a church that makes an impact upon people. That makes an impact upon those uh, that, that need direction, those that, that need to find uh, the true meaning of life, that need to have a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I look back in the reading of the Scripture, I can also say that, well, Noah was probably just a special kind of person. I mean, you know, his, his great, 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 great grandfather, you know, was Adam. Well, guess what? So was yours. You know, we all come from the descendant, right? Of, of the one cre that was created. But sometimes we would look at Noah and say, well, he, he had different privileges than what everyone else had. Well, that may be true. Maybe Noah was a special kind of person. But I'm persuaded to believe that if God was to look at each one of you, that He would also say that you're special. That you're special in His eyes. That you're, you're special enough uh, that, that God would allow His Son, Jesus Christ, to come and to die upon the cross for your sins. So that He might give you hope of all eternity. You see, because of this, because of what Jesus did for us, you know, I want us to know that, that, we, that God has given to us the promise to be able to make an impact upon the life of someone else. And you don't have to be a preacher who stands in a pulpit, by the way, to make an impact. You can, be a, you can have an impact upon your children, upon your grandchildren, upon your neighbors, and upon your neighbor's children, upon those people that you work with, and, and maybe even their children that you work with. I have an opportunity to be able to, to teach a wood class every Tuesday at Legacy. And I tell you, to be honest with you, when I'm sitting through that, that drooling hour, that grilling hour of uh, kids on the back row that don't want to pay attention, you know, that they won't sit up and they won't listen, everything that you say is a joke, 
you know, you, you try to teach them how the importance of safety and, and you're trying to tell them, you know, that uh, when you get in the shop and you've got machines that are running, you know, that you need to keep your hands away and you have some little smart aleck kid that says, why don't you just run your finger through this and show us what it'll do? <laughs> the opportunity to be able to make an impact. You know, I'm persuaded to believe that if godly people today don't make an impact upon this world, then I, our world is doomed. Yeah. If godly people today and if churches today don't pick up the, the baton and start carrying and running the race, then we're looking at a generation that probably already has started upon us that will not know anything of the appreciation of who their Creator is. That they will not recognize how important that their, their Savior, Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross to forgive them of their sins. Yes, Noah was special. But my friends, I believe that you are special as well. Everyone can make a change. I look back at my life and in the life that I grew up in, I tell you what, if, I, if you'd asked me uh, 50 years ago that, uh, Larry, do you see yourself to, today as uh, being someone that's uh, standing in the, in the pulpit to preach? Well, first of all, 50 years ago, I wouldn't even know what you were talking about. You see, I was the kind of, I was the kind of a kid that, that when I went to the church, uh, if I ever went to the church, I went because my sister took me to church or she wanted me to go to church with them, but I would be the one that would go so that I could that I could eat of those bread wafers that didn't taste very good. I had no appreciation for who Jesus was. I had no appreciation for who God was. And even when I grew up in my life, I still had no appreciation for who God was. But I tell you what, I'm grateful for the impact that so many has made in my life. And I'm grateful for the impact that God has made upon my life. It's my prayer today that we as a church, that we as an individual, that we, that we re-look at what impacts are we making upon our community? What impact are we making upon the lives of these children that are here today? You see, we, we may go pick them up on a bus and, and we may bring them here and many times what they get here, they'll never get anywhere else. They're only going to get what you give them. I remember as a child, when one time when, when I was uh, carried as a young boy, probably about the age of Malachi, on a fishing trip, on an overnight camp trip. And I don't know those men's name, but I can tell you this, that those men that was there that night, even though I don't know who they were, they made a significant impact upon my life. Because at that moment, at that moment, I recognized, not then, I do now, but someone cared enough to make an impact. You see, we have such busy lives that we don't have time to make an impact anymore. We're, we're working way too many hours. We're spending way too many hours upon things that, that are not making the impact. I read one time in a, in a funeral pamphlet that it said, don't count the number of breaths, but make the breaths count. You see, what we do in life can make a significant impact. And we can help turn this world to a life that is full of joy, happiness, and peace that comes by having that relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that by, by allowing our lives to be impacted and to change the lives of others. As we stand together this morning, I don't know what your heart is. I don't know what your need is this morning. But, but like Noah, like Noah made an impact, I pray today that you would look for those ways that you can make an impact.
probably one of the greatest ways that right now that you can make an impact in, in life. And that is, is that you begin to, to lead your children. You say, Brother Brian, my children are already, they're already grown. They're already, they're already out on their own. They, they're already started raising children of their own. Make an impact in your grandchildren. You know, my grandson, my only grandson that I have currently, he was 10 to 11 days short of being able to meet one of the ladies that loved him even way before he was ever born. And there was a promise that I had to make to her before she took her last dying breath, and that is, is that I would do everything in my power to be able to, to know for your grandson to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I not only have that goal because I want to have an impact upon him as being my grandson, but also that one day that he might be able to meet those who love him. That he never had the opportunity to know. What kind of impact are you making in life? I pray that you'll give someone else the same hope as someone has given you as we sing this song.